What's up, happy campers? Today, we're going to install a trailer brake controller in this Ram 1500. Because if you're gonna pull a trailer, you can you have a certain amount of weight that you can pull with the Ram, but you wanna make sure to have a trailer brake controller. And I really like the OEM model that Ram has, but for some reason, they don't put it in there. And we'll go over some of those details on why I think that they should have just put it in there. So anyway, on this video of Texas Family Camping, we're gonna do very technical breakdown of installing the trailer brake controller in this Ram 1500. So stay tuned. I'll put some time markings down below if there's a specific spot that you need to jump to. If you're installing it and you need a little visual help on installing this trailer brake controller. And one of the details and why this is a good video to watch, there's a great video out there by a guy that modifies his voice to sound like a demon. Why he did that, I don't know. He has a six-seater ram. He doesn't have the center console. So you wanna stay tuned and watch the removal of the center console, which is necessary in order to get this job done. So, all right, let's roll this camping gear intro. First things first, they want you, out, out of this kit, I got the official kit, it's Mopar, genuine parts from Mexico. One of the first things they say is on this metal bracket that you should pre-thread these three bolts. So before you get in there and try to put these in there, they're saying do it ahead of time. So I have found that they are seven millimeter so I have a seven millimeter socket and to help out in getting them threaded, I have gone into my woodworking kit here and gotten some clamp, <laughs> some clamp. I got a clamp and just using the uh, tailgate here to hold it steady while I just use this to drive it in. And so far I have gotten one in there, so you can see in the hole maybe there's no threads in those holes I don't know who designs these things all right y'all the goal here is to get the trailer brake installed at first thought you would think it's just the squeezy thing that's missing right there. If only it were just that. There's actually a computer that goes down. It will go down in here underneath this panel. It has to be screwed from the inside on this way, the metal bracket, and then the, the computer box just snaps in place. So this part is probably even more important, this is the computer module that handles it. Does things like remembers up to four different trailers, remembers your settings for those specific trailers, that kind of stuff. So that has to be installed. Now here's the silly part. They made this so it just snaps into place. Wow, that's really neat. That's my sarcastic smile. <laughs> it just snaps into place on this metal bracket. You have to install this metal bracket first. That's the frustrating part. Why not Dodge, Ram, Mopar, whatever you want to call yourself today. Why didn't you just put holes on this and allow me to just screw this into a panel? <laughs> Seriously, I would love to sit down with the uh, engineer that thought this through. Why is the extra panel needed? Is it vibration control? That's that's a me thing. I like to know the logic behind stuff. I look at decisions that were made and how things are done, and it's like, I don't think they thought uh, all the way through. So at any rate, enough of my opinion. Because my opinion ain't going to pull a trailer. <laughs> my apologies for the sweat. It's Texas. All right. All right, what do we got? Oh, quarters. Outstanding. 
Well, that was easy. That Was that even sticking up there? Okay, special kind of screws right off the bat. Can you see that? All right, so we gotta remove those two screws first. But uh, this is the type of bit you wanna use. Uh, I believe it's called Torx, probably why it is a T20. So we'll use a T20 here. Now with these being important screws, we obviously want to do everything we can to not lose them, right? But there's also one, if you look in here, I don't know if you can see it, this little thing comes out and there is another one back there. Yep. Awesome. So torque screws somewhere else, but Phillips screws here. Consistency is just such a blessing. My apologies for the dirt down here. Vacuumed it up a bit, but let's be honest. We're human, right? Okay. All right, y'all, for this one, Seven millimeter. Look at the threads on that thing. How bizarre. Go ahead and use the Phillips. If you're worried about breaking stuff, make sure to use your numbers on your drill if you're going to use a drill. The higher the number, the more power it is. Lower that number down, you hear that clicking sound, that'll be the motor actually cutting out before it destroys or strips a screw. Here should just be snaps. That was surprisingly easy. Obviously though, you've got a 12 volt, or as we old school people call them, cigarette lighters. That can be disconnected hopefully, let's see. Easy piece. Put the armrest down. Now I already pre popped the top a little bit. is pretty tight in here. All right, a little tour here. We got an air vent there. Obviously that's our 8.4 inch Uconnect stereo there. Another air vent there. We are going to be doing some work down there next to it somewhere. 
That's the scary part. We need, here is the wires, pre-wired for a trailer. We'll put the wires in the right place, but we won't give you the switch. All right, so to work on this better, I'm gonna need to remove these wires. And typically, if you're real scared of removing these wires, the nice thing that they've done is they usually, these plastic connectors will usually only go one way. So it's not like you're gonna sit there and plug it all into the wrong one. This is the this is like the transmission. That's the selector. The selector knob that so many people have said, that's just wrong. Yes, I know. It was a little weird at first. Let's see. That one's a little tougher to get out than the other ones were. take a station break. All right, y'all, I got that last one out. They were all pretty easy, pretty just, you know, push down on something. This one, that red lever was in the down position. Once I got it in the up position, this whole thing just disconnected from right there. So that was easy. Like I said, putting them all back together, not that hard. If you can play that little game when you're a kid about putting the triangle through the triangle hole and the star through the star hole, this is just the grown-up version. All right, so the next mission is to remove this entire bar right here and then this blank one that they never should have put in there in the first place will come out. All right, the screws were kind of short on those ones, pretty easy to come out. Please, disclaimer, if you're going to be using any power drills, drills for this kind of stuff, this kind of plastic, if you're putting too much pressure on it, it's gonna break. So please, please, please be careful. Use gentle settings, whatever gentleness you got. Everyone looks at me, they see a big brute, and I can be quite gentle. Sometimes I can be a big brute. All right. So that is out. Looks like we've got some little clips in there. Hey, sweaty guy looking at the camera. So I need something, Ooh. something to press these. go. Found it better to use. The top side seemed to come out a little easier. Bottom side's still in there. There we go. Okay, so you can see I've loosened it up. Now I will slide it out of there. We're going to call this the bane of the existence of RAM. Goodbye. Why couldn't they have just put it there? Okay. Tabs all in the same place. Could I... That was easy. <laughs> nice. Moron! Okay, anyway. Break squeezy thingy. Tell me in the comments, what is it actually called? At my house, this is trailer brake squeezy thingy. Okay. Before I put the whole dash back together, I'm gonna to put this back in the panel and then put the panel to the side as we're going to actually now work on the bracket and the actual computer box that are gonna go in there. Now I'm holding it like this. I saw some guys putting towels down. Try not to get all this fancy stuff all scratched up. 
So first off and foremost, it has a snap-in. It'd be amazing if it all just snapped in. Hello, what would you like to do today? Would you like to turn on the satellite radio? That's too bad, you didn't pay for the service. Would you like to connect your Bluetooth device? Oh, you cannot, because you are driving down the road right now, and that is not allowed. What? You'd like to turn on the air conditioner? I'm sorry, I'm going to seize up on you at the moment. You're overheating because you're pulling a trailer that's too heavy. Okay, that's snap back in place. Now, I'm going to put back in those four Phillips head screwdrivers. Screwdrivers? I'm going to put four screwdrivers in there. Just to show you all a little demonstration, I set the drill to one. Let's see what happens. I want it to be ever so gently with this plastic. Didn't tear anything up. Nice and easy. V105. What? It's not. <laughs> hey, did I mention it's a really great idea to disconnect the negative power coupling? Is it called a coupling? Did I watch too much Star Trek? <laughs> 10 millimeter. Lower panel. Yes, I need a vacuum. I'm sorry I didn't. Hey, is anybody else frustrated that most shop type tools, like a shop vac, require 120 volt? And the inverter that comes built in the truck is 115. So, power tools don't work? No? Just me? Okay. I thought, yeah, I'll just buy this electric chainsaw. It'd be perfect for camping trips. I can just plug it into the truck. What a noob. B reader. Yes, yes it does come out. Okay. So even if that's all I do, remove those two cables, leave the latch pole for the hood. That gets it to lay down pretty flat so I can get down to hopefully see where I need to go. Alright. Okay, y'all see that metal bracket there? Get that metal bracket there. Now I need to screw my other metal bracket on. Once again, engineers at Ram or Dodge or Mopar, whatever you want to call yourselves today, why couldn't the box just have screwed onto that metal bracket that was already there? Why do I need two metal brackets? I'm serious. If anybody watches this video and knows the answer, I genuinely want to know. If you come back at me with like something like legit, like it's for this purpose, I'll make a apology video. So, all right. So the next part of our already wired but not installed. These are the wiring for the trailer brake controller. I mean, I guess, thanks Ram for doing half the job. A job half well done is a job half well, I don't know. So it was all nice and insulated and protected. That's kind of neat.
Good morning, y'all. Had to take a all-night break as we needed a seven millimeter box wrench. Had to go on a hunt for it. And under lockdown conditions, people are closing early and places are selling out of stuff. So it's not really the one I wanted. I wanted something a little fancier that had the ratcheting end, but I couldn't find one. So we'll see if this will work. If not, there's a few other places that are hopefully open today that'll get the job done. So, just so you know, what I'm having to do, just to get one screw in, I'm having to stick my hand in. Oh, you can't even see it, it's too dark. That's the air vent, driver's side air vent. Having to stick my hand in there, scrape it along the inside of that air vent there, and reach down in there. I've been taking the getting that on there to move it has been near impossible so what i've been doing is taking this seven millimeter socket down in there just keep adjusting it well what do you know i'm sitting here editing this video and discover that apparently my microphone came unplugged from my camera while recording this so i'm going to go ahead and do some voiceover work at this point so I had a lot of frustration getting this metal bracket in. It was tough. Uh, I would have to get down on my knees, <laughs> lay my body into the bottom of the, uh, like right in front of the seat under the steering wheel, and then reach one hand up at a time and screw that metal bracket in from the backside. So my arms were getting really tired. It, it was very frustrating. I want to say it took two to three hours. I'd go inside, take a break, come back out after my arms felt better and get up there and just keep working on it. Uh, it took a while, but I, I gotta say, once I was all done with it, it definitely felt like an accomplishment. So, and then once you got the bracket on there, that little computer module just snaps right onto the bracket. And then a little bit of work to move these wire harnesses around so that they will plug in. Just like anything, I mean, it's only one way to be plugged in. So that is useful that they designed that that way. I feel bad ragging on RAM so much. I was pretty frustrated, though, when I was setting this all up. Now, when you put that panel back on, watch out for this LED light right there. I didn't get that mounted in there right and had to go back, take the panel back down and mount that LED light back. And you get to this point where you're going to need to rehook up all those cables. Just like I said before, it's just like a game. There's only one way that each one of these cable connectors will connect. So it's just finding the one that matches the right hole, basically. Not too difficult. And to, you can see where I'm kind of holding it. I'm cradling it and with one arm just to try to protect it so it's not getting all scratched up. Try to keep the truck looking nice as best I can. As frustrated as I was with the process of installing this, I love my Ram truck. Kind of wish I remembered some of the things that I said at this point when filming this, because I don't remember. Just working on getting everything plugged back in. And I want to say there was one clip that I didn't quite have set in properly. It's kind of showing you getting everything lined up there. So you push everything in, you've got all the little clips around the sides, just kind of gets everything snapped back in place. Take your time. It's best not to do this kind of a job when you're in a hurry. I did this over the course of two days because I 
really needed that seven millimeter box wrench that I did not have and was hard hard to get. Once you get everything snapped back in place, just had those torque screws. Get out your Torx. The T20 is what is used. T20 screws. If you're going to do any kind of dashboard work on any vehicle, you're probably going to need a Torx screw head. Whatever method you can use to keep your screws separated, make sure you don't lose them. You want to put your project behind, lose one of these specialized screws. That's a real pain. You notice the, uh, the sun visor, the silver thing up there. When I was laying down on the bottom, trying to reach up there and screw in that metal plate, the sun kept hitting me just right in the eye. So I would put that sun visor just right to block the sun from my eyes, but still allowing plenty of light in there for me to see what I was doing. You got to reconnect the cigarette lighter. How many young people out there call a 12 volt connector like that a cigarette lighter? At some point, somebody's going to say, why are we even making it this way? Why are we even using this kind of a socket? For decades now, there's been a number of accessories that have been made that plug into that circle style, but it was all originated from the cigarette lighter that could plug in there. You would push it in and it would get hot and you could pop it out and hold the hot little coils on the cigarette lighter up to your cigarette to light them up. Now we've gotten rid of ashtrays, but they all still have that 12-volt connector because so many accessories have been made for those things. i to put that 7-millimeter screw down there in the bottom. I'm curious to know why it was a... Was it a brass or copper? I think it was copper. Maybe like a, a ground... And don't forget, dealing with this kind of stuff, if you're going to use a power drill, set it to a lower setting so that you don't strip out your screws or possibly uh, put too much pressure down on the screw and crack the plastic that you're mounting everything to. I would hate for you all to ruin your dashboard, strip out your screws. And having the little, I love having the little magnetic drill bit there on the, or a screwdriver bit on the front to hold the screw in place as I'm going in to position. Now look at my mouth. It's moving words and stuff. Ha! Put some of the little rubber trays or mats back in. They all fit like just right. I mean, I, some. this is the part where the engineer that designed these was great because these little rubber mats all fit in perfect. No adhesives at all. Like they're designed just right to fit in snug and they come in and out easily. And when you put them in, like I don't worry about these things popping out at all. Must have been a different team of engineers. This one goes down to the bottom, down there by that cigarette lighter. It's probably the dirtiest one. I have a bad habit of telling everybody put trash in here because it's easier for me to dig trash out of there whenever we stop somewhere. I don't like it when people put trash down in the doors. The last step is to take it over to the Dodge dealership or the Ram dealership, have them get it activated in the system, as well as activated in their database where they hold the VIN information. Because when you go to resell your truck, then it will actually show that you've got the official OEM installed Mopar part. So it has an actual official trailer brake controller. So that'll help you out. I used to be self-conscious about getting sweaty 
and then I realize how much I love living in Texas I just have to soak it all in <laughs> there is no escaping sweating in Texas <laughs> When I grew up up north in the winter in South Dakota, you know, you had nine months out of the year where you pretty much had to stay inside because of ice and snow and just cold. And then in the summer, everybody got outside. Here in South Texas, it's completely different. Here, you usually try to stay inside for July and August, and then you have 10 months that you can be outside and enjoy the weather. Because even when it's cold, it's not that cold. <laughs> Anywho, Thank you all so much for watching this video on installing the trailer brake controller in the Ram 1500. This is a fourth gen model. That is a key detail. So make sure that if you're aiming for a fifth gen, you may want to look for a different video. I don't have a fifth gen. Sorry guys, I've got the fourth gen. All right, and this is camping gear, right? Because an RV is like a big tent you pull along and that's camping gear. So if you want to safely pull along your camping gear, you want a trailer brake controller. I'm rambling. Happy camping, y'all.